Hello everyone, it's Diego Doom here, and today I'm bringing you another review. Today I'll be reviewing Super Robot Shugoken Daizujin. Daizujin comes from the 1992 show Zoo Ranger. Daizujin, known as the Great Beast God, is the combination of the five guardian beasts. The Tyrannosaurus, Zoo Mammoth, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, and the Pteranodon. Daizujin has a will of his own and often challenges as Zoo Rangers in order to make them stronger warriors. This is the formal history of Daizujin, but American audiences know him as the Dino Megazord, aka the first Megazord, from the show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This figure is absolutely fantastic and truly an iconic piece in history. But, nonetheless, Super Robot Shogokin Daizujin is another fantastic release in the Super Robot Shogokin line. Daizujin has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint applications, fantastic accessories, and a fantastic range of articulation. This figure is absolutely fantastic and definitely very nice, very neat, very cool, and very iconic. So first, let's take a look at Daizujin's accessories. So now let's take a look at Daizujin's accessories. Daizujin comes with a pair of open hands, a pair of holding hands, one mammoth shield, one headbeam effect, one god horn sword, and one lightning cut effect. So first let's take a look at the hands, and the first pair of hands that Daizujin comes with are his open hands. Now these open hands are very nicely done here. They definitely have a great sculpt, and they definitely give off the robotic and mechanical persona here, so great knuckle joints going on here, and then the inner palm, a nice sculpt, definitely very cool. And it seems like there is a a slight metallic finish to these hands because in certain lights these are definitely kind of shiny so that's definitely very cool there. The next pair of hands that Daizujin comes with are his holding hands here and these are also very nicely done here. A very great sculpt going on and definitely very cool. And these hands hold the accessories very well and very securely. So how these hands attach are via our ball peg system and it's pretty surprising at how easily these hands pop on because for the most part uh, with Super Robot Shogokin figures, it takes a lot of effort to swap the hands, it seems like. With these, these kind of pop on um, very nicely. So, just push that on, like so, and that's it. So, pretty cool there. I'm going to go ahead and equip the other hand, too. So, we have that on, and there we go. So, it's very nicely done there. All we're doing is pop it on the pegs, and that's it. So, pretty cool there. So, the next accessory that Daizujin comes with is his head beam accessory. So, this head beam accessory is very nicely done here. You have the nice, uh, we'll say, red or probably more like magenta beam at the top, and then the blue or cyan beam on the bottom. So, definitely very cool here. Now, this is a piece of hard plastic, but does seem a little bit, um, not necessarily brittle or frail, but... It does feel like if you drop this while it's equipped to Daizujin, it will break instantly, so do handle this with care. But still very cool. Then also, too, I thought that um, this beam might be articulated due to this uh, ball it's on, and it is not. So do not try to move these back and forth because you probably will instantly break this, so handle this with care. So how this equips Daizujin, there's actually a hole here in this ball that um, aligns with Daizujin's crown. So we'll grab him, and on the top of Daizujin's head here, we're just going to go ahead and pop that in. Now you don't have to force this in or cram this in there or anything like that. Just push it in and it'll pretty much stay in place. So it's very nicely done there. Definitely very cool. So the next accessory that Daizujin comes with is his Mammoth Shield. The Mammoth Shield is very nicely done and definitely very cool. I kind of wish they would have made this die cast. It just would have made it all the more cooler. But still, it's very nicely done here. Definitely show accurate and absolutely fantastic. A great sculpt and great paint applications going on here. Definitely very cool. Now, one thing to note, there is not a lot of space uh, in between the peg and the front of the shield. So when you're sliding this on the hand, it's kind of tough. So I'll show you what I mean here. We'll grab Daizujin with his holding hand and we're going to... Kind of turn his arm or turn his hand around. Get that up there. So Daizujin here. And when you slide this in, you'll see there's not a lot of space. So the only thing I can say is you just, you're just you just going to have to force it in. But just try not to um, put too much stress on any other parts of the figure, like holding onto the forearm or something like that. And it should go in eventually. Just kind of force that in there. And, um, you know, it'll go in. So there we go. So now we have Daizujin with the Mana Shield equipped. So it's definitely very cool there. Very nicely done. So, the next accessory that Daizujin comes with is his God Horn Sword. Excuse me, the God Horn Sword. 
So this sword is definitely very nice, very neat and very cool. It has a great sculpt here on the hilt. And then the rest of the sword, the silver paint application is very vibrant and definitely very cool, as well as the gold. So this is very nice and definitely show accurate. Now this sword equips uh, very easily here, so we're just going to go ahead and just slide that right in there. So there's no worries or no resistance there like with the shield here, so it just goes right on there. Very nicely done. Definitely very cool. Then the last accessory that Daizujin comes with is his lightning cut effect part. Now this is all part of his finisher here. So this is pretty cool here. Um, nice uh, lightning going on here. Definitely a lot of surges here. On the inside, this is a thick piece of plastic here. It's pretty sturdy, so there's no worries of dropping this and something breaking off. Even these pieces seem a little bit sturdy, even though they seem a little bit frail, but still, very nicely done. Now how this equips, we just grab Daizujin for sword and you just slide that right on there. And it doesn't click or slot in, but once you have it on there, it doesn't really fling around or slide off what they just did there. So let's see if we can push it out so it gets there more securely. So there we go. Push it on there. And, you know, you can move this all around and stop sliding out. So definitely very cool. So now we have Daizujin's accessories out of the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Daizujin figure itself. So now let's take a look at the Daizujin figure itself. Daizujin has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint applications, and a fantastic range of articulation. So first, let's take a look at Daizujin's head here. So Daizujin's head is on a very nice ball joint here. So he can look all the way left, all the way right, very high up, very far down, and tilt side to side. So it's definitely very cool there. On the back, Daizujin has two cannons here and actually fold forward and actually wind up resting on the two tips on his chest here. So we'll just pull these out. Now these are on like a double hinge joint here, so they're um, very nicely done. But one thing to note, um, sometimes we move this figure around quite a bit, these cannons just kind of get out of place, because there's nothing really holding them in place, but they're just kind of guided in place, if you see what I'm saying here. So let's go ahead and fold these cannons forward here, and these will just rest on the pieces on his chest. So definitely very cool there. Very nicely done. So what I'm talking about with the cannons here, um, there's a slot where this circular piece uh, goes into here. And it's not that it's um, you know, held in place by it, it's just kind of guided in place by it. So if you move this around a lot, it's gonna come out, but still, no worries, it's still definitely very cool. So, Daizujin's shoulders here are very nicely done. You can actually push the shoulders forward here and a nice range of movement there, so definitely cool. So this helps when you're um, having Daizujin wield the god horn sword with two hands. So absolutely fantastic, so that allows him to reach more across his chest. Now, the arms here can actually rotate, and as you can see, um, you can do a full 360 rotation here. Now, one thing to note, if you hear all that squeaking, I believe that is plastic on plastic, and that kind of concerns me because, you know, I don't want this to um, wear and tear and heat strip and streak out and then break or something like that. So, when turning your figure's arms, do handle of care because I'm sure that this plastic on plastic rubbing is probably stressing something in the figure, so do be careful with that. The shoulder pads are articulated, so that's very nicely done there. Then the biceps here, they actually rotate around. Very cool. You have a double jointed elbow here. Very nicely done. And then also, um, at the wrist here, this actually folds up too. So it's definitely very cool. Absolutely fantastic there. And then the uh, hands here on our ball joint pegs, they rotate around. Definitely cool there. So, in Daizujin's chest here, he has no upper chest movement, but you can actually open up the waist here. If you just pull up ever so gently, the chest, or excuse me, not the chest, but the waist is open up a little bit. And now Daizujin can lean very far forward and very far back and also kind of tilt side to side. So it's definitely very cool here. Now, I do not think um, this piece can actually twist around. Um, I feel too much resistance when I attempt to do it, so in the comments below, if you have this figure, let us know if this can actually twist here at this opened up waist, um, because I really don't want to be the one to figure out if it can or cannot, because I'm sure if I try this and it doesn't work out, it will break, because this doesn't seem all that thick in here, so still very cool. So we'll close that back. So for Daizujin's legs here, the uh, skirt actually opens up so it doesn't hinder too much articulation. It's pretty cool there. And these are hard pieces of plastic here. See? And the side skirts actually open up too. Just a little bit. So definitely cool. So as you can see the legs in here, legs can move forward and back just a little bit based on my figure's experience. Now, um, I had to do a lot of um, just barely nudging, trying to wake up the joint here to move the legs forward and back. So... 
be aware when you first get this figure, the leg joints are going to be extremely tight and you just have to gradually wake everything back up. It's still very cool. So let's go forward and back a little bit and then uh, out to the sides a little bit. So very, very cool there. Then the uh, upper thigh here can actually rotate. So it's definitely cool there. Then in the knees here, you have a very nice double jointed knee. So the knee bends here at this point and then also at this point here with this square piece. Let's see if we can get that to go. There you have it. A very nice double jointed knee here. Definitely very cool going on here. Then in the feet here, the feet are very nicely articulated. Now initially the feet are like so. So you have the uh, triceratops on this side here. You can actually pull this foot joint out and down. Pretty cool. Let me extend that joint there. Push it up and pull it back down. Very nicely done. But also the uh, heads of the triceratops and the cerebrus you can actually move up. So what we do is we're just going to isolate the head and tilt that up. So it's great for dashing poses here. So definitely very cool there. Then with the saber tooth tiger, same thing applies. You can pull this down. Very cool here. Also, you can move the uh, paws here back and then tilt the head up just like the triceratops head. So let's see if we can get that or maybe we have to. Yeah. This head comes up all the way. Let's see what I'm Try to figure out what I'm doing wrong, which I don't think I am. Maybe. Oh, the head was already extended, so it's like this. And you can actually get out to come out about this much. So definitely very cool there. Put that back. Push it in. Now, one thing to note, um, it seems like it's uh, kind of hard to have Dizujin standing perfectly straight. And I think that comes from the Sabertooth Tiger here with the... Um, extra pause here to add an extra um, unevenness to the legs here. So um, you can attempt to get him straight, but he won't be perfectly straight. That's not a big deal though, but it's just something to be aware of when you're like photographing or anything like that. Cause I had a problem with that when I was filming the intros for this review, but still definitely very cool. Now, as far as Izujin sculpt here, absolutely fantastic and absolutely spot on here. A great sculpt going on, a very nice vibrant red, yellow, and silver going on here. Definitely very cool. This sculpt is absolutely spot on and I have no complaints at all. This is truly a fantastic figure here. One thing to also note, a great attention to detail, as we all know, the uh, Tyrannosaurus is the centerpiece for Dizujin. I actually have, you know, the sculpt for his feet where his feet fold up because, you know, his knees actually um, socket into the Triceratops and the Sabertooth. So, you know, that's just a little detail to me that means a whole lot. So it's definitely very cool. Then also here in Dizujin's crotch... You have a hole here to plug in your Tomshi Nation's uh, stage, I think it's Act 5, for your robotic figure. So it's definitely very cool here. Because do not plug this in to your Stage 4 stands, your humanoid stands, because they will snap the tip of the stands, because that's what happened to me. Um, I was not paying attention, or I just kind of wanted to get some extra support for them. I put them on there, and it snapped almost instantly. Just the tip of it, not the entire neck, but still. Always follow the instructions and the recommendations. But at the end of the day... This figure is absolutely fantastic, very hefty. And as far as die cast content, um, from what I can tell, I believe it's in the legs. Um, I think it's the entire leg assembly, and I think that's about it. And I guess also the chest here. So it's kind of hard to tell with the Super Robot Shogokan figures because it's um, a hefty figure as a whole. So very nicely balanced. So it's definitely very cool. So... Now that we have the Daisujin figure out of the way, let's go ahead and conclude this review. To conclude the review, Super Robot Chogokin Daisujin is another fantastic release in the Super Robot Chogokin line. Daisujin has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint applications, fantastic accessories, and a fantastic range of articulation. This figure is absolutely fantastic and definitely very nice, very neat, and very cool. I absolutely recommend this figure to absolutely everyone. This figure is a true iconic piece of history. As I was filming and, you know, handling this figure, all the nostalgic memories from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came back to me and it was just a great representation and a great throwback to my early childhood. So, absolutely pick this figure up. It is simply fantastic. Also, if you haven't done so already, definitely check out the 1992 show, Zoo Ranger, to get the full scope of the true inspiration for Power Rangers. This has been another review by Diego Doom. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for more figure reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe.